Hi booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be about the books that I managed to finish in the month of December and it's also a bit of a sad day as well. This is the last time that I am going to be filming in front of this particular setup. If you've been following my videos then you'll know that at the beginning of December I completed purchase of a flat and I'm hoping that by the end of January that I will be moving in which means these gorgeous little items need to be packed in boxes ready to be moved and that has to start now if it's going to be done on time. This isn't going to be the last time you see the setup. I have a whole set of videos that are pre-filmed um, which I filmed back at the beginning of December knowing that I was uh, going to be having to pack up my books and probably not have so much time to film so those are going to last for the last few months so you'll see a gradual transition from my old setup this setup to what's going to be my new setup which i haven't quite decided yet how that's going to look and um, that will be decided when i move in uh, so this is going to be my final wrap up in front of these shelves january wrap up February TBR, um, I might just be sat on my bed with a backdrop behind me um, as I get settled into my new place. But yeah, so so sad times, but also happy and exciting times ahead. So let's talk about the books that I did finish in December. I only managed to finish two books. I thought that December was going to be a light month. Um, in terms of finishes because the I'd completed on the flat and there was a lot of decorating to do and I knew I was going to be backwards and forwards so a lot of the time that I normally spend reading over the weekend is now taken up with preparing the flat for me to move in so yeah so I did only pick up two books that month um the first of those was a series completion which I'm really pleased about and that is Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff this is the final book in his Nevernight series. The Nevernight series follows Mia Corvair, who is trying to avenge the death of her family when she was a young girl, when she was about 11 years old, I think the book starts. And she is taken in by a group of assassins called the Red Church and they train her up. And she's using their training and the skills that she gains with them to try and avenge her mother and father and brother's death. Dark Dawn is the culmination of all of that and it follows Mia after she's been honing her skills in the Gladiati uh, series. Um, in the previous book, the, the whole series is actually based around uh, what we know of the Romans. So it's kind of a Roman retelling, a Roman basis. And that comes through very, very strongly through all three books. With this book, obviously, uh, it is the final book, so I can't really say too much about it because it would just give it away. There are uh, lots of fast paced and fast moving sequences of um, peril that Mia is in and uh, her friends. I did get very frustrated with Mia in this book. Um, she Not only was she warring with herself with the fact that she wants to have this vengeance for her family, but also she's been identified as the chosen one uh, to resolve an age old prophecy. Uh, so she's warring with herself on that. Also, she has friends who want to help her on this journey and she's trying to stop them but it was their choice and I just got really really frustrated with that um, because she just she kept trying and she just never seemed to get the message that actually they were there to help her they they weren't there out of a misguided sense of loyalty they were there because they loved her and she just needed to get on board with that so so yeah so I did get a little bit frustrated with it overall I did enjoy the book and while I probably won't reread the series, as I've said previously, I think with God's Grave, the second book, there are some problematic issues with the writing. Um, there's a little bit of misogynism. There's a little bit of, there's a real sense of um, religious kind of, I can't think of the word I actually want to use, but but not really celebrating the differences of religion but actually putting one religion down over another and that really strongly came through in the book and I didn't enjoy that so much. I did enjoy them overall, 
I do think that they are great for young adult readers who want an introduction to fantasy and fantasy worlds. I wouldn't say they're for maybe younger than the age of 15. There's a lot of violence in them. There's a lot of sexual content in them, especially the final two books. Um, and I think there are some elements that could be triggering as well. So um, there are allusions to rape. There is also obviously female um, violence against each other in relationships. Um, so there's lots of, of issues that I think need to be kind of thought about before you hand these to someone of a more sensitive um, reading nature and maybe of, of a too young an age, you want to consider the age. But I did enjoy them. I would recommend them to someone who was looking for a good intro to fantasy, but I wouldn't say that they're the best fantasy books out there. And the second book that I managed to read in the month of December is The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. This is the first book in the Lycanius trilogy. This book had me confused. Um, it follows four characters. It follows Davian, Weir, Ashalia and Caden. Uh, Weir has two names. His other name is Torin. Ashalia is also known as Ash. Um, Davian, Tor, slash Weir and Ash are students at a school for gifted people. There are different magic systems in this world and one of the magic systems had become corrupted and 20 years before there had, there had been a war to wipe out the wielders of that particular magic system. It turns out that Davian is um, carrying that magic himself. They haven't actually wiped it out from the world. And he has to go on the run from the school and is sent on an errand which brings him into contact with Caden. Caden is a young man who has lost his memory. He has no idea who he is. All he knows is that he may have the magic. Um, not the forbidden magic, but the magic that the children were at the school to learn to control. Again, this type of magic, while it's more accepted in this world, it's still frowned upon in some ways. So he is on the run himself because he's used this magic and he's used this magic to create a devastating impact. This book left me a little bit confused. I didn't really know what was going on. It's definitely a book that you need to pay a lot of attention to. It wasn't the right book for me to read in December because my focus was so much elsewhere with the flats and everything going on there that I just couldn't focus on this book properly. And I probably missed out on lots of little bits of pieces of information that maybe would have kept me more involved in the story. I am going to continue reading the series, though. I have already asked my local library uh, to reserve a copy for me so that when it comes available, I can pick it up and read it because I want to know what goes on. I'm really intrigued by the fact that there is this boundary in part of the world which is holding back um, evil and some evil entities. And I'm really intrigued by that because the magic that has been forbidden and wiped out is the only magic that can keep this boundary in a good condition and stop the evil uh, entities from crossing over into the world and making it any worse than it already is. So I, I kind of like that premise and I like the fact that we need to follow Davian who is trying to then figure out his place in this world. Um, it's also a bit of a coming of age story. So Davian, Weir and Ashalia are in their teens. Caden is a bit older, I got the impression. They're also being influenced by older people within the world and they have lots to learn. So I'm I'm enjoying it from that point of view as well and I'm looking forward to picking up An Echo of Things to Come which is book two um, very very soon because this is kind of a read along as well um, and I think book two we're hoping to read in the month of February. Other than that I didn't pick up any books in December those were the only two books that I actually picked up at all. I didn't even read my book club pick for December um, that rolled over into January, but we had a bit of time there um, with it when the book club meeting was, so that helped. But yeah, that was it. That was all I read in December. Uh, so a very light month this month for me in comparison to previous months. What did you read in the month of December? Please let me know in the uh, comments box down below. I'd love to chat with you all there. 
I make videos every week and I put them up Mondays at 6.30 p.m. UK time. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you like my videos, then please subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all again in the next one. Bye.